For those of you who have been following my psychoanalysis foundation training, I'm just going to share with you my thoughts following my narcissism training seminar this weekend just gone. So, narcissism, pretty heavy topic, got sent four pre-reading texts which took me the majority of a week to read. I will link the titles to those texts in the description below. The day itself was split into four parts. So the first section in the morning was going through three different psychoanalysts or therapists or theorists and looking at their interpretation of narcissism which was really interesting because it gave again a really varied approach into the subject and reminded everybody that there are multiple ways of looking at and working with a presentation I really enjoyed that section of the lesson because it really emphasised diversity within the work. The second section was to watch a video, it was like an extract of a video, about Enid Blyton played by Helen Bonham Carter. So I don't know if that was like a BBC thing or if it made it to the cinema, I'm not quite sure. But they used that because there was a clip, I don't, I haven't seen the entire film, we watched about 20 minutes. So the way they put that together was showing us an excerpt that really demonstrated narcissistic traits. We then had to go off into smaller groups and discuss our immediate responses to having watched that. I was quite taken aback at how it felt like everyone in my training group was straight in there with the judgments kind of going, oh my gosh, she's vile, oh, I wouldn't want to be like that, oh, could you imagine living with her, oh, oh, oh. Whereas I, again, hung back and I was thinking to myself, whoa, what has she been through? What must she have experienced in order to have ended up that hardened, that unaware, that self-centred, and I mean that in a analytical term, not in a judgmental term. And I just was really taken aback by the idea that if somebody has reached a point where their personality is so severe, then they must have encountered something equally severe in themselves or in their own life. And I was coming from it at that place, more of an empathic kind of like, I want to understand this person, I want to get my head around what's caused this, like a chain of events, like cause and effect. Whereas most other people were really kind of defensive to it and kind of thinking, whoa, that's, that's not very nice. And sure, it's probably not very nice to be on the receiving end of it. But if you're training to be a therapist, you're going to be working with people that have these presentations. You have to be able to relate to those people. That surely is the most critical part of this process. It's not about working out what you do and don't like about people. It's working out about how you can and can't relate to people and thus strengthening your ability as a therapist. That's how I approach that part of the day. So I came out of that section actually feeling really comfortable in myself that I would feel very okay to work with somebody presenting narcissistic tendencies. We then did a section where we looked at some case studies. So it's interesting to point out actually that for each lecture we get two completely different teachers that we've never had before. The association has plucked people from their pool of tutors and taken the best suited people to each topic that we're covering. So this being the second time I've attended, felt really great. It was it was nice to not know who was going to be teaching us. It was interesting. It gave us a totally different perspective. So they both brought a case study of client work that they had done. So using 
a patient that they had worked with that was presenting narcissistic traits and used key points from the work but whilst maintaining the anonymity of the clients and then just got us to think through how we might have worked with that client, what we thought of the way in which the work was carried out with the client, whether we had any overriding questions or input or thoughts at the end of what we read. Now they ran that like peer supervision. And for those of you that don't know, that's essentially where you have a group of therapists. One of those therapists brings a client that they wanna discuss professionally and get some additional professional input with. And then the remainder of the group all chip in their responses to that situation. So in this case, the tutors took the role of presenting therapist. So they were presenting their case. And us as the students were giving the professional insight into how we felt the work did or didn't go or what we might have done differently. I loved doing it like that. The tutors were so receptive to the suggestions, it felt really warm, everyone was very respectful, it provoked some interesting debate, it was it was really great actually. It was really great to explore multiple different ways of looking at one case. Peer supervision is something that I have thoroughly enjoyed throughout my training, I do really find it beneficial. And then at the end of the day we had a discussion on the topic of narcissism, so taking into consideration all that we had read, all that we had experienced during the training day, our personal experiences of being around narcissistic people, exploring our own narcissistic tendencies. It was so insightful. Everybody had something really valuable to contribute to the discussion. Everybody was having really diverse reactions to one another. Some people were really aware of themselves and elements that they wanted to work on and improve. Other people were really aware of people in their life that display narcissistic tendencies that they now felt differently about. There were concepts from the reading material and the lectures that people hadn't before considered, so there was a deeper sense of empathy towards the end of the day. Just overall, just a really positive experience of a topic that could have been really heavy and depressing and quite intimidating. So actually, I think the majority of the class came out of that feeling like they were really, really glad that they had attended that session. As you know from my previous video, the day ends with a process group where half of my year group and half of the year group above me merge and sit in a reflective space until something comes up that feels appropriate to talk about. I'm still finding this process group quite challenging. It doesn't feel like it has a warmth to it yet. It feels like we have discussed some really heavy topics. I think the topic of death dominated our process group this time around, whereas previously it was about loss and they're pretty heavy topics to process for an hour and a half with people you've never met before. Process is taking longer to get used to than the actual training itself. At one stage it got a bit emotional but that was really well managed and the group seemed really supportive of each other so that was a really good sign that there are some great foundations in that process group moving forward, so that was lovely. Now, at the end of the day, I did something new. So we all get appointed what they call a tutor. Now, this is somebody that isn't within the college. This is a member of the organisation who are external to the college. They're not actually teaching. They're more like a mentor. We have to meet with them twice a term. And it's a place to discuss how we're feeling about the course, about the process, about our own psychoanalysis, about anything that's coming up in us whilst we're training. Now, when I heard that I had to do this, my immediate reaction was, great, and how much is this going to cost me? Because the outlay is already pretty hefty. And then I thought, oh, that's another new person I'm going to have to meet and get to know, and oh... <laughs> So I didn't have a I didn't have a great optimistic view of this element of the training, I'll be honest. However, when I spoke to my designated tutor on the phone to arrange our first appointment, 
I actually found her to be really friendly and open with me. She was really honest about the fact that she had not been given this role before and that I was her first student. And I'm not gonna lie, I was a bit like, great, so I'm being practiced on, marvellous. But I thought, give her the benefit of the doubt, we've all got to start somewhere and maybe she'll be really good at it, so we'll see. Turns out she lives in the centre of London. Well, I say in the centre of London, that's not true. She doesn't live in the centre of London. She lives like on the outskirts of London, but to me it feels like the centre of London because I live in the countryside. So she lives in London. Effectively, I'm supposed to work with her face to face. And I was like, oh, that's so challenging because it's like a good hour to get to her house. And then like, like the traffic and, and then like an hour to get home and an hour's appointment. And I'm thinking, that's another half day gone. Oh, how's this gonna work? And I thought, okay, no, it's fine. I'll ask if we can meet after college. And she said yes, which is amazing because we actually do college on a Saturday and don't finish till half six. So I didn't get to her until almost seven, which is very good of her to agree to work with me that late considering it's free. Maybe she's being paid by the organization. So maybe it's not free and that's why she didn't mind. I don't know, whatever, it doesn't matter. So after getting a little bit, not lost, but just confused about where her home was because it was like this Tudor building that was, I don't know if it was sort of like a square shape with, you know when you've got like a lawn in the middle and then you've got all the buildings around the outside, it was kind of like that set up. So you had to go up a flight of stairs, walk along a outdoor corridor thing and then up some more stairs and, and the parking was nowhere near and the sat nav drop off point was nowhere near and it, it was all a bit higgledy piggledy. Anyway, now I've found it, I'm not gonna forget where I'm going next time. She opened her front door and it was like being inside a mystical cave. It was full of trinkets and artifacts and art and furniture and like all very deliberate but equally really eclectic. Loads of plants, it was like botanical in there. Lots of like really pale wooden furniture, but really oldy worldy furniture. It was, it was just, it was amazing and bizarre and homely, but yet overwhelming. It was just this incredible space with just so much going on in it, which, was interesting because obviously Freud of psychoanalysis was huge into his artifacts and stuff and I kind of felt like this has a massive Freudian ring to it but in your own unique way which was cool and she was so sweet she was she's shorter than me and that's not easy because I'm not very tall and she sat in her living room on a chair in the center of the room and she had like a little footstool in front of her and she sort of just sank back and sort of she was lying at that kind of angle head here feet here while I was sitting upright on her sofa and she just looked so perfectly relaxed and not asleep but in a sleeping position <laughs> I just thought what is this <laughs> Another element of this training, it just doesn't cease to amaze me. But the vibe was just wonderful and I probably hadn't been in the room for more than two minutes before I felt like I could just give her this outpouring of my experience so far. She just felt so comfortable to talk to. So, 100% positive experience, way better than I was imagining. So glad I actually elected to go to her house and didn't push for a Skype conversation. And as such, I used the opportunity to talk about my feelings about my psychoanalysis and kind of try and get a bit of clarity over whether or not what I'm experiencing is is right and how it should be or whether it's not right and I need to do something about it. And it went really well. She basically said to me that she from the information I shared with her, she wasn't in a position to criticise someone else's way of working. She said that although it wasn't the way she would approach her client work and it didn't sound like her style, it didn't mean that it was wrong and it didn't mean that it couldn't be effective. It just boiled down to whether or not we mesh as two people working together. 
because she said like if for a prolonged period of time you end up feeling like you're just bashing against one another and it's not moving you forwards and it's not what you need then no it's not going to be right for you but if you take the discomfort in the work and you work with that together then that could be tremendously growthful so that really did reassure me i kind of thought okay i can definitely work with this so i felt empowered about it's actually tomorrow night session now going in there and speaking to him and sort of saying right okay before we before we get into anything today we need to discuss how we're relating and I felt like, yep, yeah, I can do that. And I felt empowered and I felt supported and I just had a really great experience with her. I kind of secretly thought, I wish you were my analyst. But we get sent what we get sent for a reason. So maybe all the right pegs are in all the right holes as far as who I'm working with and why just need to have a bit more trust in the process at this stage. Overall, my Saturday, my narcissism workshop and my first experience of meeting my tutor was so positive. Really, really had a great day. The reading was harder, but the experience was really interesting. My next training session is going to be on the Oedipus complex. If I thought narcissism sounded like a heavy topic, I think they're getting progressively more intense. For those of you that don't know, it's about sons falling in love with their mothers and wanting to eradicate their fathers. It's Greek mythology, I think, and it's really involved and it's basically kind of like the epicentre of Freud's psychosexual theories pretty sure that's accurate <laughs> check me with all my new vocab so yeah i've been sent the reading on that and i haven't even opened the documents yet i just thought i just get this training out of the way and then i'll fill my head with oedipus i oh <laughs> i've got about three weeks to get that read i don't know how i'm gonna do this but i will do it i will do it okay so that was my experience of narcissism training and I shall hopefully put together some of the learning that I did, so more theoretical stuff on narcissism so you can really get to grips with what we learnt. If you like this video give it a thumbs up, if you are enjoying following my training journey then subscribe to this channel so that you get to see new videos all the time. My next video will probably be my sixth session of psychoanalysis. I do a video every time I go to see my therapist. And leave your comments below if you've done narcissism training or if you have trained to become a psychoanalyst and this is similar or different to your experience of training, then let me know in the comments below what you think of my experience in comparison to yours and what you're taking from watching these videos. Thanks for watching.